Hello and welcome to the Smart Women in Business podcast. I'm your host, Jane Mackay, and today I'm speaking with Google's top-rated entrepreneur coach, Bree Seely. We talk about manifestation and how trusting the universe has been key on her amazing entrepreneur journey. To find the show notes for this episode, head to my website, janemackaycommunications.com.au forward slash blog. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe so you get all the latest episodes. Hello and welcome to the Smart Women in Business vlog and podcast. Today, I am super excited to be talking to Brie Seely. Brie is a best-selling author, entrepreneur, thought leader, innovator, and business visionary. Over her 14-year entrepreneur journey, Brie has trained close to 5,000 people around the world and helped countless entrepreneurs bring to life their tailor-made business strategy, set up their systems, grow their teams, increase their revenue, land incredible publicity, and create massive. I had finished my master's in Italy, moved to Washington State, gotten a day job, um, and didn't want to let go of, I had studied fashion. My bachelor's and master's were both in fashion. And my day job was not in fashion. And so I didn't want to lose it or let go of that creativeness. And so I was like, well, I'll just start a business. And so I started very small doing like bridesmaids dresses and flower girl dresses and prom dresses. And over the course of eight years, ended up winning awards, being on the cover of like the the top trade newspapers in the country, selling to Zappos, dressing like Tony Braxton and just like all these crazy things. Um, But what I realized in that journey was that while I love fashion, being in the business of fashion was not aligned with who I, who I am, what my vision for my life is, what my values are. And so after eight years, I had been pretty frustrated and just pretty upset, just not really understanding why things weren't working out, why I was so unhappy and got a very clear message one day in meditation to shut it down and walk away. And so 72 hours later, I did. I shut my business down and had no idea what was next and just had, had just hired a $25,000 coach and then literally turned around five days later and shut my business down. And so I knew though, I knew that hiring her was the right move and I wasn't about to back down from that. And so then the question became, well, I'm not going to ever work for anyone else. So what are my next steps? And I just started asking the universe for signs and guidance and realized that people had been asking me for years to help them do what I had done in my business. And they didn't mean a fashion business. They just meant like, you know, how did you start a business and make it so successful and make money at it? And so little by little over the last five years, I've really kind of found my niche within coaching. And I do coach entrepreneurs to either start, grow or scale their businesses. Um, And I just love entrepreneurship. Like Mm -hmm. I just love it. I'm obsessed with it. I eat it. I drink it. I breathe it. I think it, I sleep it. Like it's everything about my life because I just think it's one of the most, one of the best opportunities that we have to express ourselves Mm -hmm. unapologetically and like live out our values and make money at being ourselves and sharing our gifts and skills with the world. Mm -hmm. It's funny because you talk about being obsessed with it and it's people who don't aren't obsessed with their businesses um don't get what it's like to be first thing when you wake up last thing before you go to sleep when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning when you whenever you're doing pretty much anything even meditation as you say it's always there it's, it's like it's part of your being it's part of who you are so and it's and it is a, in a positive way because my husband said you work too much and I'm like but I love working you know most people go I hate working and I, I hate Mondays and I'm like oh, yeah it's Monday I get to work you know yeah. and it's it's part of that whole well DNA and I, of who you are I've definitely been on the unhealthy end of the obsession yeah, spectrum <laughs> like over the last 14 years um, but I, I also believe that I, I had to witness that and experience that in order to find what is that healthy layer and level of obsession with it. Mm. And now 
it's more a part of who I am rather than I feel like before it was like my identity mm. and that if I didn't have it, then I wouldn't be anything. And so I've, I've found over the last 14 years more of myself mm. and then entrepreneurship is just part of that puzzle. And so I love my business and I love working and I've also found a way to scale my business in such a manner that I can support way more people than ever before and also not spin myself into burnout and not yeah. be working 24 seven and actually allow myself. I, like I told you, I just took this trip to Tulsa. I actually went on a trip without my laptop for four days. Whoa. Revolutionary. Whoa. I know. Crazy. <laughs> but boundaries but like, are such a, a part of that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Boundaries absolutely. are crucial. I don't work weekends um, ever. Yeah. I've gone in and out now being back in Minnesota. I was just talking to the, the girlfriend I'm living with and she's like, you work a lot. And I'm like, yeah, but what else is there to do here? Oh, like, well, actually, when I was in, York, in lockdown, I have been working weekends because I'm bored. <laughs> when I was in New York, I like didn't work Friday, Saturday or Sunday because like I just, I, I have, you know, a full life now being in Minnesota. I'm like, what am I going to do? Hang out with my cat again? Like what? There's <laughs> literally is nothing to do here on a normal day. And now we're in lockdown as well. Like, no, but yeah. you know, the stages and ebbs and flows and like it. Yeah. So. Yeah. As long as you're not, see, for me, it's the transition from thinking about my business all the time and feeling stressed about it to thinking about my business all the time, being creative about it. And that's the difference between when I'm heading for burnout and when I'm loving it. Yeah. So it's yeah. that creative side of things. So over the course of, so you've, you've been in the coaching side of your business, you walked away from fashion five years ago. So yep. in that business, that's obviously been through an evolution. Now you've, you've, you know how to, you've scaled it in such a way. So what have the signs for you, the evolution, the points at which you recognize it was a science for you to change it again, change up, pivot, whatever word we're going to use at the moment. Yeah. I mean, mostly all of that stuff comes through my intuition. So for example, like I kind of, my, my first like boom with my business really hit when I was teaching manifestation. Um, but I, I started really feeling dissonance with teaching manifestation because it just like, it just felt very superficial. And so like intuitively I was like, I, I want to be teaching things that are deeper than just manifestation. I, it's less for me about like getting the perfect house for someone and more like, let's create the life mm. where you get to be the woman who has that house. Mm. And let's create the life where you get to be the entrepreneur who leads the seven figure business, right? Like it's not even about the business. It's more about like your development. Yeah. And so, you know, that happened. And then I started incorporating more specific business strategy into it because for whatever reason, until like really a year ago, I didn't feel like I knew enough to teach people business, even though I'd been in business for 14 years and I was raised by an entrepreneur. And so I have like 20 years of experience, like two decades of experience, right? Like when is enough going to be enough that I'm yeah. like qualified to teach entrepreneurship? But a year ago, I really started embracing and teaching entrepreneur strategy and business strategy and stuff like that. And, um, so all of my kind of next steps in business, I've always been just very intuitive and, um, signs from the universe. So the entrepreneur one came because a friend called me and was like, did you know that you're ranking on Google for the term <laughs> entrepreneur coach? And I was like, no. And he was like, have you ever done SEO on your website? And I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, your position's 16 right now on accident. He's like that literally never happens to anyone ever anymore. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, clearly it's happening to me. So like, maybe this is the universe, like nudging me to finally embrace this next direction for myself. And when I, I switched my website over to WordPress, did some like SEO stuff, just myself, right? Like not being an expert. And I, I skipped from position 16 to position one, like in 48 hours. So I'm, I just like, I watch what's happening. I listen to the universe. I, I watch for signs. And so 
um, I'm just really in tune and that kind of is what what guides all my next steps in business. It's interesting you talk about the dissonance with manifestation and and the the person I work with in terms of of that energetic level is always talking about coherence and it's got to be that coherence between your values, you, your soul, your vibration and all of that things and, and manifest people are focusing on manifesting as in I'm going to have this car but it's actually not it's not that it's I'm going to have this feeling. Yeah. I'm going to have this this level of joy and and i think that's what people need to focus more on in manifesting and less on the i want a new car because well, a new car's and, not gonna make you happy yeah and the other thing i talk about a lot too is like okay if you see yourself driving the red ferrari but you're currently driving like a gray toyota you know who is that woman that's driving that red ferrari she probably acts a little differently than you act. She probably thinks a little differently than you think. She probably believes different things about herself than you currently believe about yourself. So a lot of my manifest, and I still incorporate manifestation into everything I do because it's, it is what helps you get to that next level. Mm. But I approach it more from the perspective of who is that future self? How does she operate? What does she believe? How does she think? What actions does she take? How does she show up? What kinds of shoes does she wear? Like, how does she do her hair? And then it's more about becoming that future version of yourself. And when you can become that future version of yourself, every, all the things, all the external things just click into place mm. in a very easy way where you don't have to worry about it and you don't have to stress about it. It just works. Yeah. So that's more of like the perspective I approach um, manifestation from is that it's that like becoming work mm. it's, it's the, the inner work, work. Yeah. then the outer work stuff happens yep. without you actually physically doing it yep so yeah and i think that's a really interesting perspective because people talk about it like it's a cosmic cash machine it's it's not that's not how it works so interesting that i i you know i hadn't I don't often explore that in, in my podcast. So that's, it's an interesting topic. And I, I mean, I could talk about that for days, but we won't. Um, so well, I was going to say quickly too, like it's yeah. what I've used three years ago. I had just gotten back from Bali and I'd worked with a healer there and she was like, stop waiting for things to happen. You need to set your intentions for what you actually want and make them like go after them. Mm. And so at that point I had just had my first six figure year was like riding high off of it. And I was like, okay, well, I want to do like, you know, multiple six figures next year. And she was like, why are you waiting to, to be a seven figure business owner? That's what you're here for. You need to go after that. Mm -hmm. And so I got back to the States and I like made a, a commitment and I was like, okay, I'm going to be a seven figure business owner. And so my work over the last three years has been, like I said, who is that woman? How does she dress? What does she think? What does she believe? How does she mm -hmm. act? Who's on her team? And so it's been building out that like kind of back end stuff so that the outer world stuff can just fall into place. Mm. And it's pretty cool right now because it is all falling into place right now. And it is amazingly miraculous to watch when you can be aware of what's actually happening. And it's pretty cool. <laughs> it is so cool. <laughs> I love it. So how do you manage your life day to day as an entrepreneur? So you said you worked usually four days a week, um, which I think is a goal for a lot of people, like not too much work, not too little. Yeah, I, um, I actually do work pretty committedly four days a week mm -hmm. and right now five, let's be honest. Um, but we're bored. <laughs> I, I seriously, <laughs> like there's nothing better to do. Um, I get up every single day at 6 a.m., and part of that is twofold. One, I love having mornings just to myself, especially like I'm living with people right now for the first time in like years. And so I love having that morning time to myself. And also my cat gets me up at 6 a.m. to feed her. <laughs> so I get up at 6 a.m. every day and I generally take the first three hours to move my body, read, meditate, journal, um, tap in with what is my vision for today? What's most important for today? What does my team need for me for today? Um, and just really use that as kind of my like setup time for the day. And then generally between nine and four ish, um, I'm pretty focused. Yeah. Uh, but that like today, uh, took a lunch break and went and ran to the store and got a new, 
a new pot with soil to replant my money tree. And so it's, it's like, you know, I have like a structure, but I, I flow within that structure. And it's really important to me because as entrepreneurs, we're creative. Yeah. And if I'm too rigid, it ends up killing my creativity. A friend of mine explained it to me like this, that there's, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, just be in flow. And it's like, but at the end of the day, the river still has banks. And, and without those banks, if you've ever seen a river that crests its banks, mm. it just goes everywhere. It has no direction. Mm. It's Yeah. So for me, I, I kind of have the structure of like, okay, from this time to this time on these days, like, you know, I'm focused, but what happens within that is such a flow. Mm. And I just allow myself to kind of create it each morning and really identify what's most important today. What am I focusing on today and go from there. Brilliant. Um, and, and, and it is important because people, oh, you work for yourself. That must be so amazing. You can go and do whatever you want. No. I work in those set hours every day. I'm not off having massages or getting pedicures or having lunch. Um, Some days. Some or, days. Oh, I live in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I will schedule stuff during work time, but then I, I try to, like, if I know that I'm, I'm having a massage at, you know, two o'clock, I will hop in for an hour and check out my team that night or something, yeah. right? Like, so it's, I, I do my best to just kind of maintain balance with all of it. But like, sometimes it is nice to go have an afternoon lunch and. Yeah. I, I kind of have that time where I go, yeah, you know, I can go and see my kids do their, you know, their, what they call fellowship at their school, their, their presentation or get an award or whatever, and then go, okay, well, I'll, I'll start work at 10 and I'll make up an hour in the evening or whatever. And yep. that and school holidays, don't even get me started. Um, so what tools do you use in your business? You've got a team, you've got a team of four, five, uh, seven, seven. Yeah, I know a lot of humans. It is, but what has kind of come really naturally to me and, and kind of, if I might been a little bit genius is that every single person on my team stays within their zone of genius. So I have a content writer who only works for me five or six hours a month, but she does all my content writing for me in those five to six hours a month. Yeah, oh, I, I love have, <laughs> oh my God, just, you want an introduction? <laughs> let me know. Um, I have a speaking agent who's literally just going out and pitching me for speaking gigs. Mm. That's, that's all she does. So when I first started building a team, I, I had an assistant who was like a full-time assistant and I would just pile everything on her plate, but she wasn't a trained copywriter. And she wasn't, uh, she didn't know how to pitch and she didn't know how to do all these things. And so I was having to try to teach her and try to get her into that like proficiency in these different areas. And it just didn't work. And it ended up being a huge money suck for me. Mm. So now I'm like, yes, I, I have a few team members that only work for me five or six hours a week, but they stay in their zone of genius and they do what they do really well. Yeah. And then we all get to combine all of our zones of genius to be like funneling towards the growth of this amazing business. Yeah. That's really interesting because, you know, we, we, we look at people who have teams, especially solopreneurs. I'm still a solopreneur. I don't have anybody because I go, how will I manage that person? I've got to train them. And then, you know, are they full time? What do they do? And then instead you go like, I'm just going to get this one person and they're just going to do that thing. And it's only going to be six hours a week. And then you're not commit or six hours a month. Even you're not committed to that full-time wage or taking on employees. You just find the freelancers that do what you need them to do. You know, we generally start out as freelancers. We know how to operate. We know how that operates. And so that's an interesting point to, to, to people who don't have staff, but maybe need someone to go, you know, just get someone for six hours a month if that's what you need. So what tools do you use to keep in touch with them? How do you manage that? A lot of people have a lot of different recommendations for tools. Totally. We generally use Trello. Yeah. That's been like the best place for me to create systems and assignments and, um, 
like kind of, you know, I, I have like a content system where I like I do one thing and then it goes in Trello and then the team just takes it from there and they do all their jobs. And it's just so nice. Everyone knows what to do. They know where to find things. They know time. Like it's just so easy. Um, so Trello is a great one. We do use Slack a lot to communicate. In fact, my, uh, my assistant just messaged me earlier and she's like, I accidentally deleted something from the drive. No. She's like, I can't find it. I'm like, I got it. Um, uh, so Google drive is another thing that we use just because all of our emails are on Google. Yeah. We upload, you know, we have folders and just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of organization. <laughs> so much organization. <laughs> um, Zoom is a huge tool in my business and frankly has been since yeah, well amazing. before. Um, I think I started using Zoom, I want to say in like 2016, um, because I serve clients all over the world mm, and I too. have since mm. the beginning of my business. And yeah. so I used to use like Google Hangouts and it just got super glitchy and terrible. I've and never like Skype. Skyped. Shocking. So bad. So yeah. bad. Anyway. <laughs> Seems amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so Zoom has been a huge tool in my business for four years. Um, and other than that, in terms of team-wise, I think that's the the most. Yeah. Oh, I just started using Voxer. Yeah, Voxer's um, fun. I like because yeah. I am much better at voice memos. Like, if I can respond to someone in a voice memo, it will take me this much time. Versus if I have to sit down and write an email, I, it could take me two weeks, right? <laughs> like, even just the simplest email response. Um, and so re actually recently, one of the things I most recently delegated to my assistant was my inboxes because I'm like, I just, like, I can't, I just don't respond to emails. So Voxer has been my new one, especially with my community manager and my saleswoman. Like we are, that's the quickest. And I've started using it with clients too. Mm. So. Yeah, I love yeah. sending a little, hey, even on Facebook Messenger, hey, yep. checking in. And then it's a conversation and it takes me 20 seconds instead of 20 minutes of sitting down. And it's just not, it's more personal. It's just, you know, emails are so impersonal. But I love a voice message. So one of the things that I always ask my guests about and one of the things that I affects every single entrepreneur I've ever met is imposter syndrome so what are your methods to overcome overcome imposter syndrome or that that barrier and, and how do you respond to the bad days in business yeah so I have retrained myself to know that when my imposter syndrome comes up it means I'm actually on the right path <laughs> the big because, scary bit <laughs> yeah because if I were just like sitting on my couch, I don't know if any, anyone listening has ever noticed, when you're sitting on your couch watching Netflix, your imposter doesn't have anything to say. No. And so I started recognizing like, oh, when I'm not reaching for my dreams, my imposter's pretty quiet. So that means that when I am making those big moves and that I am going after audaciously that goal that I've set for myself, that's the only time she shows up, which means that she thinks her job is to like hold me back and keep me safe. Yeah. Whereas I know my job is to not hide in the world. And so I just have started training myself that when those thoughts start popping in, I'm like, oh my gosh, I must be so close. Like I must be onto something really good, especially the louder she gets. I'm like, oh, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. <laughs> I love that and approach. So it's, um, it's just been, I mean, and of course it takes a lot of practice, right? Like, you have to first become aware of your imposter's voice. You have to be able to spot it when it comes up. You have to be able to hear the different inflection that that voice uses because I, I'm pretty sure everyone is like this, but like my, I have so many voices in my head, right? <laughs> and they all, but they all sound like me. Yeah. So I have the imposter voice. I have the, you know, feisty voice. I, like I have all these different parts of my personality, but they all sound like me but they all have differences as well. So my imposter talks differently than my like sassy, feisty, like go get them go person. Get or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, so I'm taking I, on the world. I've, yeah. I've had to like really sit with and, and get to know that part of myself and then start to retrain myself to be like, Oh, if she's popping her head into the mix right now, that means that I'm on the right path rather yeah. than the wrong path. Yeah. She's trying to keep you safe. That's okay. That's a job. 
acknowledge yep. that and then go, okay, feisty one, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So you we talked about, you know, creating a successful business, obviously you have a very successful business. And what do you think is that one of the key things that differentiates then the successes from the failures? I mean, the simplistic term is never giving up. That's really key. But do you think it's a mindset or systems or what's your approach to that? I think, I think for me, it has been a mindset because, so when I closed my fashion brand down five years ago, I went through a huge spiral, Mm -hmm. like nine months of just crying and tears and shedding and all sorts of stuff. And part of it was that I I was afraid that people were going to judge me for failing at that business. Right. But I ended up listening to a podcast from the guy who founded the Dollar Shave Club, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I've gone back to try and find it. I cannot find this episode anywhere. I don't even know where. I found it when I was researching my book, actually. But um, he he really talked about how, you know, we can choose to see failure if we want. But really, for me... Had I not had that eight years of fashion business and had I not chosen to step away from it, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And so rather than seeing it as a failure, I just began to start seeing things as part of my journey Mm -hmm. and necessary parts of my journey in order to get to the next step and the next level. And then even if there are like, like my, that's on like a macro perspective on a micro perspective, if something quote unquote fails, Again, I've just kind of trained myself to be like, oh, well, clearly that wasn't meant for me. Mm-hmm. Or I guess that wasn't an alignment. Like I, I think really my entrepreneur journey has been so much of me developing this unshakable, ridiculous level of faith in the universe, God, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And I know that if something's been taken off my path or if I've been rerouted on my path, I just have this faith, this trust, this knowing that I'm being redirected Mm. towards what I'm supposed to be focusing on. I mean, even leaving New York, I had this, New York was literally the only thing in my life I've ever wanted. I've wanted to live in New York since I was five years old. I lived in New York for 14 months before the universe was like, get out. Leave. Yeah. And that was a huge, like, Mm. am I failing? And could I not hack it in New York? Like, and so I, I I did go into that, not going to lie for a little bit. Plus it didn't help that we had all been, I hadn't seen a human in eight weeks. Um, COVID has been very real. Especially for New Yorkers. Oh my gosh. Speaking of all those voices, like, wow, Mm. they're much louder when there's no other people around. (laughs) So, um, But I am just trusting like, and I'm being rerouted right now to a place in the United States where I like, wasn't even on the short, like the long list. Like it was, it was on no list to ever, ever, ever live or relocate to in my entire life, ever. I had only been to this, I'd driven through this state twice, 45 minutes a piece. So I've spent an hour and 45 minutes of my life in this state over the last 37 years. And now the universe is like, it's time to go there. Yeah. And so for me, I'm like, it's not my job to question mm. why the universe is rerouting me in this direction. Like if you had a GPS and they're like, oh, take this left turn instead of that left turn, you wouldn't be like, but why GPS? Why are you rerouting me? Mm. You would just trust that it's taking you in the right direction because that's its job. And I think really my entrepreneurial journey has been learning to just trust the universe and know that if I'm being pointed in a certain direction, and away from a different direction, that it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it is not my job to question it. So I may never move back to New York. I may move back in a year after my contract is up living in Oklahoma. I don't know. But I'm just like trusting that whatever the next steps are, I'm supported, I'm guided, I'm taken care of. And I I frankly don't have to worry about it. Mm. That's an amazing perspective. And and I think that perspective of failure like uh, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's also an entrepreneur and they were like oh you know I didn't get that proposal or I didn't get that quote I submitted I didn't get oh I failed and it's like oh really I just don't ever I don't ever think about those 
they just if I don't get them I don't get them that's it they're gone and yep. you can't dwell you can't sit in that negative space because the whole thing of being an entrepreneur is pick yourself up again and just keep on going find the next client be resilient have the grit to keep on going so it's it's interesting that you have that perspective just know that you're in the right place and keep on going and and let yourself have those days but bring yourself out of them as well when so, I moved into this little house, we have this little light up marquee by the front door. And I was like, what am I going to put on here? I want to put a mantra on here. What am I going to put on here? And so I put on there, you're on the right path. Yeah. And you've just got to know. Yep. It's got to trust. Trust. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, so I know you have your Facebook group. So how, yes. what are the, what are the ways you maintain your sense of community uh, while working, you know, with your team, but also by yourself a lot of the time? Yeah, our Facebook community is kind of in a revitalization mode, which is very exciting and fun. Um, so I love, I love that because that really just allows me to connect with people so much. Um, Instagram is the other place that I uh, love yeah. connecting with people. I love my DMs, although yeah, I get too. a little overwhelmed with them sometimes. <laughs> but um, I love Instagram. And then you know, I have a lot of like personal community stuff that I've built for myself with my fellow entrepreneurs and my, um, my witches, as I call them, <laughs> um, my magic folk, uh, that we get together and, and have, you know, WhatsApp threads and just like all this stuff. And, and I travel a lot. So I get to host, well, had and will again, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, meeting people in person and I'm going to be doing a big in-person live event, um, probably in 2021. Um, so lots of, lots of ways to connect and commune, um, and more coming. Hmm. I it's think, really it, I think COVID has forced us to find our online people, uh, and, and, and embrace them in a much more personal way than we had in the past. It was more like, Hey, Hey, yep you know, chat in the DMs, but now I'm getting people come from my DMs and go, can I just have, you know, can I have a clarity call or can I have it? And I'm, I'm doing more of the face to face stuff like this, not humans <laughs> um, from that community, that online community than I was, I think pre COVID. It's been yeah. really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. When COVID first started, I was like, you know, I, my co-working space has been shut down. So I actually started a virtual co-working uh, that was two hours a day, five days a week. Um, and I did it April, May, and most of June. Um, it just, it got to be too much of a commitment to me, but it was such a nice space for, for multiple women to just gather and we would just meet quickly. We turn on our video and we'd be like, hello, you know, what's everyone up to today? What's everyone focused on today? And we would do three Pomodoro rounds of yeah. work. It's just the nicest way to connect with people and know that other people were there, but also be focused and working and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I just, things got so hectic. I just couldn't keep it up, but it was a really nice way to have community during a time when we couldn't have community, community. basically <laughs> in real life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think we we're, we're, we're really proving our, uh, our adaptation skills for, for creating community which, and I think people have realized that that connection is actually what life is about. You know, it's been, it's been really full on. So um, what is your why? Like at your core, you, you talk about your values, having alignment with values and your vision. So what is, what keeps you motivated? What's that, you know, what's your vision? So my big, 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 big why is to really be raising the consciousness of the planet um, and so, you know, obviously I do that through entrepreneurship, but I'm super passionate about helping people really find those values and then live as themselves, unapologetically themselves, their values, their vision. And it's just, it's really, I think the world would be a lot happier place and a lot easier place to navigate if we were all just ourselves. Mm -hmm and living out what we wanted rather than the shoulds and the have tos oh, and the supposed should. tos. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what our parents expect of us or what society expects of us or, you know, who we think so-and-so wants us to be. Like, what if we could all just be ourselves? Mm -hmm. What if we could build lives that were just based on what we want 
and what we need. Um, so that's really my why is to help more people get in touch with themselves and express themselves unapologetically in the world through entrepreneurship right now, but I used to do it through fashion and who knows if that might change again. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is a journey. We're never sitting still. <laughs> right. Well, the thing I thought was interesting was that my why really didn't change even when my business changed. Yeah. So my why when I was in fashion was pretty much the same as it is now. I just am doing it through a different modality, which is yeah. kind of cool. So I'm like, oh yeah, that means like that really is what I'm here for. And really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how I do it or how I execute it. But like, that's what I came here for is to help people be themselves unapologetically and really tap into their values and their vision and just create it for themselves. Yeah. That's, uh, the world would be a much happier place if we could all do that. <laughs> right. So what is, what are your top tips or your top number one to leave us with today for all the smart women in business in the world? My, yeah, my corner, cornerstone of entrepreneurship for me is also that there is no one size fits all approach to entrepreneurship. And so, you know, my top tip would be really looking at and identifying how you can make your business yours. And again, using those values and using your vision, using your zone of genius to build your business. Because if you're trying to build someone else's business or someone else's vision of success, it is going to quote unquote fail, right? Mm. Massively. Mm. Hashtag learning lesson. <laughs> and you're going to have to start all over again. And so, you know, my, my whole approach to entrepreneurship is you first need to know yourself. You need to know what you're good at, what you want, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And then you build a business around that. Mm. Because like we were talking about the disharmony, if you are out of harmony with your business, it's never going to work. And you're never going to be satisfied. It's, yeah, mm. it's going to be terrible. Yeah. Like we've all worked for people before that we, that we were out of harmony with, which is yeah. why we get motivated to become entrepreneurs <laughs> and it's terrible. So why would you do the same thing to yourself again? So figuring out all of that inner stuff for yourself and then tailor making your business to that mm. rather than, you know, trying to see a business and mold yourself into that. It will never work. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Bree. Where can people find out more about you and your business and what you do? So best places, obviously my website, breeseely.com, B-R-I-S-E-E-L-E-Y.com. Um, there, I do have a free course up on my homepage. So if you yeah. go to my homepage, there's a I'll free course the called, awesome. It's called how to build a tailor-made business to monetize your genius. Um, and then, like I mentioned, you can come join our Facebook community, which is called Monetize Your Genius. Um, and like I mentioned, I love Instagram. So you can always come <laughs> hang out with me there too. <laughs> I'll put and all if, the links to find Brie. Yeah. Oh, if you send me a DM telling me you saw me on this podcast too, <laughs> so that I know where you came from and would love <laughs> to chat with you. let Brie know that you came yeah. from here. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much for your time today, Brie. I really appreciate it. It's been amazing having a chat with you. Thank and you. I'll see you around your DMs and in your Monetize Your Genius community. You've been listening to the Smart Women in Business podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and don't forget to subscribe.